create a video that shows you how to do a one sample Z test. So this is the first test that we're learning to do hypothesis testing. And so in this case, what we're doing is we're comparing a sample to a population. And the question we're asking is, uh, is the difference between the sample and the population different enough so that the differences wouldn't be seen by chance. And so uh, to illustrate this, I've concocted a hypothetical question. So we're going to go through the steps of hypothesis testing, asking whether or not ha the Hufflepuffs of today are significantly more conscientious than the Hufflepuffs of yesteryear. So what we've done in this very hypothetical example is to take a class of today's Hufflepuffs, so today's class of Hufflepuffs, and compare them to all the Hufflepuffs who have ever taken this test of conscientiousness. And I'm actually going to upload this Word document for you guys. And so here you can see the data that we have. So we have the population of all of the Hufflepuffs who have ever taken this uh, test of conscientiousness through the years, and that is the population. So that's this line. And so we get a mean of 30 with a standard deviation of 2, and uh, 10,000 Hufflepuffs have taken this test. And so our class of Hufflepuffs is here. That's the sample. So we're going to compare the sample to the population. Our sample has a mean of 30.5, a standard deviation of 4, and there are 36 people. So the n is 36 for this class. So to go through the steps of hypothesis testing, and all of this is outlined in your web courses and in your book, you do the first step is you state the null hypothesis. And in this case, it's just that the null hypothesis means that the population mean represented by mu right here is going to be equal to the sample mean represented by x bar. So the means will be equal. And then in hypothesis testing, we need to set the level of risk that, we're, that we'll take right, to the level of risk that actually we say that there's differences. Right? So we say that the population and the sample are different when in fact they're not. Right? So we're only seeing those differences by chance. And so in a traditional statistical setting, we set the level of risk at 5%. In other words, an alpha level of 0.05. And so that is the level of risk that if I don't state the alpha level, that's the default level of risk. And usually at the beginning of your test, I will say in the instructions that if unstated, the alpha level is 0.05 because that's generally the accepted alpha level in the social sciences. So uh, we go to step three. And so now we need to select the appropriate st test statistic. So you know we're doing a one sample Z for this because that's the whole point of this video, right? We know what section we're on, we know what tests we're taking usually, but please know why we're selecting the test, right? So here we're co comparing a sample to a population. Uh, there are guidelines for when you choose a t-test versus an ANOVA versus a within samples t-test, etc. So make sure that you know why the test is appropriate and you'll thank me later because that is definitely going to be something that uh, that comes up in exams three and four in the final. So, but here we're doing a one sample Z test. And so step four is to calculate the test statistic. And as you'll see, our Z score is gonna be 1.515. How do we get there? And so that's what this whiteboard is for. So, so again, this is our information. And I apologize because writing on these whiteboards, as you guys know, is not very easy for me with my magic mouse, but I'm going to do it anyway. So the first thing that we do is we calculate what's called the standard error of the mean. And that is, I'll write it out here, standard error of the mean. 
And to get that for this equation, we do, this is a sigma, which just means the population standard deviation. Okay. So population standard deviation represented by sigma over the square root of n. Now what is really important, sorry for the, I wouldn't say handwriting exactly for the mess here. So we've got sigma over the square root of the sample size n. And what is oftentimes very difficult for students to remember is that the top here, we're referring to the population statistic. Right? So we're going to look over here for this is our sigma. We're talking about the population. So this blue line is all the, the population. And then the bottom is going to be the sample. I'm not even going to write that out. I'm going to sample. <laughs> so we've got that here. So we're going to have a 2 over the square root of 36. And because I made this up, these numbers up, it's super easy. It's 2 over 6 or 0 0.33. So this is our standard error of the mean, our SEM, go us. And so now we need to actually calculate our test statistic, which is our z-score. So now what we're going to do, it's going to look just like the z-scores you've done for individual z-scores, only in this case, the individual score is the sample and the what would be the sample score before is going to be the mean. So I know that sounded really weird, but I am going to write it out. So basically the, the smaller part, so this would be the individual score in a Z score. And here the bigger part is going to be the mu or the population mean. And then we just do that over the standard error of the mean, right? So just like a z-score you've done before, really easy. And so our uh, a sample mean was 30.5. Our population mean is 30. I know you're all laughing at my handwriting, my tech writing. And so we're going to do that over 0.33. And so, of course, it's going to be 0 0.5 over 0.33, and that's going to work out to 1.515. Yay! So we've calculated our test statistic, our z-score. So we pat ourselves on the back, take a deep breath, sip of water, whatever, walk around the block, and then we interpret it. So we found our z-score to be 1.515. And now we need to determine the critical value. So you're going to do this a lot for all of your tests, all of your test statistics, all the hypothesis testing we do in this class. So basically, the next month, six weeks of your life is going to be looking up these critical values. So there's only a few in a one sample z-test, which is nice. Did I have this up? Well, it's in your, this table is both in your book and in your lesson. And so here, if you look it up, you will find that the critical for a one-tailed test at alpha of 0.05 is 1.645. Now, why is it a one sample, or sorry, why is it a, one-tailed test. Well, I'm assuming that we think that our, excuse me, our class of Hufflepuffs is better than all of the ones in the past. So that's a directional hypothesis. So for a directional hypothesis, we will use a one-tailed test. So um, now if you, it would be different, it would be a two-tailed test if you were just like, well, I'm pretty sure they're different. So my hypothesis is that today's Hufflepuffs are different from 
you know, previous generations of Hufflepuffs, but I don't really know if they would be more or less conscientious, then that would be a two-tailed test. But we think we're better, so we're going to pick a one-tailed test. And so we find that our critical value is 1.645. When we compare our observed value, that's also called our calculated value, or basically what we got for our test statistic, right? So this is our observed slash calculated value, our test statistic. So we compare those, and so if our uh, calculated value is less than our critical value, then we cannot reject the null. In other words, in this case, and in all cases where the observed value is less than the critical value, we cannot say that there are statistically different, uh, statistically, <laughs> bleh, statistically significant differences between those groups or among those groups, right? So we cannot reject the null. So we fail to reject the null. And so we basically can come to the conclusion that Hufflepuffs are conscientious no matter what the era, no statistically significant differences. So please uh, ask me questions as usual. If you have any confusion about this, I am going to upload obviously this video as well as uh, this Word document for your practice. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. And I hope every single one of you